You want to know how I record my fireworks? Okay, stay tuned and I'll tell you, right here on Boom in the Sky. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome to Boom in the Sky. Thanks for coming, guys. I'm so excited to be here, and I apologize off the bat for not posting a video in the last two weeks. Today, I've got a special video for you guys. Somebody asked me a couple weeks ago, actually, and I've been wanting to make this video, uh, what camera equipment I use to, to shoot fireworks and to shoot store tours. So I figure I'd put it all together and we'd take a look at a deep dive into my camera equipment. Uh, a little background, I've been a photographer for years. Not so much as a professional photographer, like that's my job every day, but I've loved it. photography and videography now have become a hobby of mine. So I've really amassed a lot of these products for the last 10 years, so or five years at least. So it's not like I just went out and bought everything all at once. I got one piece, two pieces, three pieces, and eventually I have a pretty nice kit to record fireworks. So anyway, I'm gonna take you through it. I've got it all uh, laid out by the product category. I'm gonna start with the camera, the lenses, the microphone, my lighting setup. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff, tripods, uh, other random accessories, my bags, all that stuff. I'm gonna cover it all. So hopefully this doesn't go too long, but let's get started. Okay, so the first product I'm gonna talk about today is my camera body. So about two years ago, before I started Boom in the Sky, I started another YouTube channel. It's still around, I haven't done anything because the last video I made, my camera decided it went swimming. It wanted to go swimming. So I had to replace my camera body. So I picked up this one. It's something that I've been wanting for quite a while was to upgrade to a full frame camera. Uh, I'm a Canon person through and through. I will probably never change. I'm a DSLR user, DSLR shooter. I love them, I love the way they feel. I love their performance. Uh, there are things that are missing and I wish they had, but for me, this is enough. So this is my baby. This is the Canon 6D Mark II. I believe uh, right now, if you were to pick it up, it would be about $1,200. I bought it as from Canon as one of their refurbished models. I think I paid $1,300 or $1,250, $1,400, something like that. Uh, to buy it new at the time, like two years ago, would have been about $1,700 or $1,800, but I bought it used uh, from Canon. So um, that's also a good idea, is if you're looking to get it new camera equipment, you can always look to the, uh, the certified, renewed uh, product from whatever it is, Canon, Sony, Nikon, whatever your brand is. So anyway, that's my main body. Now, if you're asking how am I shooting this video, if I'm holding the camera in my hand, uh, through my work, I actually have access to another camera. It's the Canon 90D, that's 90D. It's an APS-C sensor uh, and it's attached to one of my lenses. I'll get into that in just a minute. But anyway, that's my camera body. Um, uh, and before I let this get away from me, I will link all of the products that I talk about in the description below. There's a link to kit.co address in the description as well. That has all of my gear in general. It's got some fireworks gear. It's got my camera gear, my videography gear, lenses, tripods, everything. So check that out. It's a really cool resource. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're gonna keep moving. So I'm gonna talk about lenses. So the first lens that I use, it's actually the last lens that I had purchased, but the first and the, the lens I use the most for shooting fireworks is this guy. This is the Canon 16 to 35 uh, F 2.8. So it's super fast and it's super wide angle. It's a really, it's kind of a pro lens. Uh, it's got that nice red ring on the end. But anyway, this is the, the go-to lens that I use to shoot fireworks because it gives a really wide point of view and perspective when you're looking into the sky. 
Uh, you don't have to be super, super far away, but I can be right underneath it and capture the entire break. So I really actually have two camera setups. I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but this camera setup that I'm talking about right now basically is uh, the camera setup that I point directly at the sky, directly where the fireworks are going to break. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna keep going, but that's the lens I use. Uh, it does have uh, an autofocus and manual focus. I would recommend that for most, most of you, definitely turn that, once you have it focused of where one break is, turn that to manual focus and just let it be focused on that area of the sky instead of trying to do that, uh, trying to find focus and find the firework between dark black skies and really bright bursts. So, but anyway, that's the 16 to 35 millimeter Canon 2.8. Uh, I love this lens, it's great. I'm so happy I purchased it. Before this, I was actually shooting with the lens that I have on the camera that you know, sh I'm shooting with. So the next lens on my list is the 24105 uh, f4. So it's a little bit slower, it doesn't get as fast, it doesn't open the lens aperture doesn't open quite as much, uh, but it's a really great lens. It's a great all-purpose lens and it's turned out to be a pretty great lens for shooting fireworks as well. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you get a pretty wide uh, angle. So this one's 16, that one's 24. So uh, it's eight millimeters difference, but uh, it's, it's just enough that you can still get pretty wide shots. So, especially if you're shooting on a full frame body. So anyway, that's the next lens. Um, I bought it years ago. It was actually the first real lens that I picked up. If you were to buy it right now, I think it would cost about $800. Again, I bought it maybe seven or eight years ago. I think I paid 13 or 1400 for it. Uh, the things that make a lens more expensive is the size of the glass and how fast it is. When I say fast, uh, how, how wide open can the aperture go? The lower the number, the faster the lens, the more expensive it is. So this is a 2.8, it's a straight 2.8, so across all of the, the focal length from, from uh, 16 to 35, uh, it can stay at 2.8. Um, if you buy, when you buy a camera, a lot of times you'll get a lens that has a variable aperture, which means it at the, the lower the number, so at 16 or whatever it happens to be, 28, 32, whatever it is, uh, it'll say like F4 slash F5.6. So what that means at 16 or whatever the lowest focal length is, it will record it the fastest that it can open is f4 when you go to the higher number the higher focal length uh, the fastest it can go is f5.6 which is a it's a much smaller opening uh, you don't get as much you don't get that shallow depth of field you don't get that nice bokeh but again this is what i'm shooting with so anyway, back into the lenses. Again, we talked about this one. This is the 16 to 35. We talked about the one that I'm shooting with right now, which is the 24 to 105 f4. And then the third lens I'm gonna talk about, it's uh, not as easy to shoot fireworks with because it's a long telephoto lens, but it is also my baby and I love it. And that's this one. This is the 70 to 200 comes with this massive it is a beast it's heavy it, you know, it actually has a, a, a tripod mount so that you can mount this to the tripod instead of the camera and then it doesn't bend over or fall down I'm actually going to put it onto the camera here lines up nice click that's what it looks like on the camera uh, again this is a still a zoom lens but it is a much longer telephoto lens so uh, it's harder you can get things further away last year actually on the 4th of July I went to the Fort Lauderdale uh, fireworks show uh, I was far enough away that to get the the bursts fully and so that they filled the frame and they weren't a tiny 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 dot I used this lens so this is the lens I used but Get, get you right in there, but again, it's also a beast of a lens. It's heavy, it's heavy to carry around, but 
takes up a lot of space as well. So, but I love this lens. I use it for photography and now I use it for videography. But again, I will link that in the show notes down below. So, uh, so that is the Canon 70 to 200 and that's pretty much it for lenses. I actually do not own another lens. So if I had to buy one more lens, I would probably buy the 24 to 70 2.8, but because I have this lens that I'm shooting on right now, I don't feel it's really necessary. Uh, I believe this one uh, right now is about $1,300. It's not cheap, I will not lie. Uh, I bought it, I think it was 17 or 1800 again, uh, but that was a year and a half ago, two years ago. So, but love this lens, love it, love it, love it. Can't recommend it again enough, but it is a hit on your wallet. So anyway, I'm gonna put that down. We're gonna keep going. Okay, so the next, next round of products we're gonna talk about is microphones. And I think this whole video concept came to me uh, originally back in January or February maybe. Um, I was out in Las Vegas, I was demoing and touring the, I was doing stuff at Red Apple Fireworks, I did stuff at, uh, I did a store tour at um, Blackjack Fireworks and Area 51 out there, uh, and somebody commented that when Doug turned around, when we were doing our store tour, he couldn't, he couldn't hear the audio clearly. So uh, that one I was actually using uh, was a very directional microphone. This guy right here, this is the Movo VXR10. It is about 40 bucks on Amazon, comes with a nice uh, little kind of leatherish case, uh, comes with a couple different plugs. You can actually, when you buy this, you can actually plug it into your cell phone using one of the different cable, not this one, but one of the different cables, you can plug it into your cell phone. So if you are just getting started or you wanna invest in a microphone, this one is 40 bucks. I can't speak highly enough about it great it comes with this nice they call it a dead cat it's a diffuser so that the wind when it hits it uh, it doesn't get that noise so uh, but anyway 40 bucks it does fit onto a, uh, a camera with the uh, cold shoe or there's actually a tripod mount on the bottom as well so whatever it is however you want to use it it's great I'll get back into this because I still use this this microphone but uh, anyway but that's the vxr 10 uh, again it's on amazon i will link that down below as well so that's kind of my carry microphone it's easy it packs up um, i used to have another microphone it was one of the longer a uh, little more pro not professional but a little more uh, feature set microphones uh, the mounting system kind of fell apart so right after literally right before my trip to las vegas and pahrump uh, it fell apart so i was only able to use that one it was a little too far for that microphone but if you're up close it's great if you're you know 8 12 10 inches away from your mouth uh, when you're recording you're holding something uh, looking at yourself it's great but I did invest in a new microphone. I'm really, really happy. Uh, I did a lot of research on YouTube, on all these different things, and different people who are professional, you know, recording engineers, and they can't stop talking about this microphone. Uh, this is the Deity D3 Pro. So you see it there. Um, it does come in this nice case. It's a hard, kind of semi-hard case. Uh, you open it up. They come in a couple different configurations. This one came with the case, the microphone. Uh, it does have, a, a, I guess it's a windscreen here. Uh, it doesn't do too much, but um, the other thing it comes with is, as I was talking about before, about dead cats. Uh, it's just the term, I did not make it up, look it up. It's a very common term. I think they call them dead wombats too, but this is the dead cat that comes with it. You just simply slide it over. It's a little not tough to get on, but it's, you can't do it right now, but you slide it over and now you have a much better windscreen. Um, so anyway, that's the Deity D3 Pro. The things that I love about this microphone, it sounds good, it's rechargeable. So uh, there's a USB-C plug right here. 
uh, so you can just recharge it even on the go. If you have a portable battery pack, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, there's a 75 or 150 hertz uh, low pass filter. So if you are in a windy environment, you can actually set that in one of those two configurations and it will try to cut out some of that low rumble that you get. So <clears throat> the other thing that I love about this microphone is it has a stepless gain on the back, right where it says deity. So um, my previous microphone had three different settings. It had whatever the normal was, the zero line. Uh, it had negative 10 or negative 20, and then it had positive 10 or positive 20. I don't remember which one, but it was three of those settings. Uh, if you were recording already and you were, your audio was too loud, if you pushed that to minus 10 or minus 20, you would, it was a huge audible difference. This one has what's called a stepless gain. You can actually twist it just a little bit. You can gradually, uh, while you're using this, again, you can mount it to a hot shoe uh, or a cold shoe on your camera, but uh, you can slowly twist it. You slowly ramp up or turn down the audio coming into your camera and nobody's the wiser except you, but you get better audio. So anyway, there is another version of this. Uh, this one, I think is about $200. Uh, it's not cheap, uh, but it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth it. There's another one just called the Deity D3, which doesn't have that stepless gain. It has a couple different features. I think that one uses batteries as well, and it's $100. So this one's $200, that one's $100, uh, but totally, totally, totally worth it. So would highly recommend Deity. I'm gonna put this away, and we will keep going, because I've got a new product to talk about that I'm actually recording with right now. When somebody commented about my video in Pahrump at Red Apple, when they said, when Doug turned around, I couldn't hear the audio, I went looking for a solution. Now, the Deity D3 Pro is still a, a very directional microphone. If somebody turns around, their audio is going the opposite way away from the microphone, not into it. The other issue that you have with those type of microphones is while you're recording, whoever's standing in front of you, the microphone is pointing at them opposed to pointing behind you. Now, literally last week, Deity introduced a new microphone that actually has two microphones. So it has one microphone going this way and one aimed at your mouth. So it's the perfect vlogging microphone but I haven't tried it out, looks really cool. Uh, if you're looking to buy a microphone, I don't know how, I don't even know how much it is. They, I think they just introduced it last week. Uh, the guy's name is Andrew Jones. Uh, he works at Deity, he's an audio engineer and a recording engineer. He's done stuff with films and whatever, but anyway, that's a different story. So, <clears throat> but definitely check out that, that Deity. I think it's the D4 uh, is what it's called. Uh, if I can find it, I'll link that as well down below. But here's what I did. So I went out, I started searching for different products that would address this very issue. And what I came up with was a wireless lavalier system. So being that I'm a fan of Deity, Deity had introduced the Deity Connect system. When I got it, it came in this box. It literally like a Pelican case. It's super sturdy, uh, super well built, uh, but it comes in this. It is a 2.4 gigahertz system. And the best part is, and this is hopefully I'll get back to uh, being able to do this in the future, but if I want to record both myself or someone else, this system will do that and it'll allow me to do it. Why? Because it uses two transceivers for one receiver. So for example, right now, this is one of the two, but this is the body pack that I'm wearing. I actually just have it sitting on the table. So this is the body pack transmitting my audio. Um, this is called the BPTX. So TX meaning transmit. So it's got an antenna here. This is the 
cable that's going to a lavalier microphone, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. And when I talk into it, it gets much louder. So that's the lavalier mic, but you get two of these with two microphone, lavalier microphones, some wired microphones. You put this wherever you want, on your belt, in your pocket, uh, on the back of your leg. They're, they're make some crazy body straps that you can buy. I don't need those or have those. I just put it in my pocket or on my belt. But um, you can control a whole bunch of different things here. It does lock the interface so it doesn't, you don't mix it up. But you have a whole bunch of different menus and settings and you can do that. That's the transceiver. However, the other end, and again, there's two of these. The other side of it is the receiver. So this is what you use to get the audio. Now, the cool thing about this is on the bottom, there's two different tripod holes or two different mounting holes, uh, just so that you have some flexibility on how to mount it. Now, if we open up the case, it comes with comes with this setting, uh, this uh, accessory. It is a cold shoe to a tripod mount. So I would literally screw this in. Again, it's sitting this sitting on the table, so I don't need this, but um, I've used this before. Um, I did make a video, I haven't posted it yet, but you can actually screw this into your, uh, you can mount this onto your tripod. I mean, your. you can mount this onto your cold shoe on your camera. You can have all of your controls right here. Again, this one locks as well. You just hold down two buttons and it, it unlocks for you. And the best part is you can control everything from this one or the other one on this without having to touch. If someone else is using it, you don't have to go and fiddle with the settings while it's mounted to them. So there's another one that comes with a, there's another uh, accessory of a strap. So you could put it on a, you could actually mount this to a tripod or something else. Um, but it's a really cool system, really cool setup. I'm really, really happy I bought it. I'm actually recording this right now with that, this system. So. I hope you like the audio. My voice is a little bit scratchy today, so I apologize for that. But again, this is the Deity uh, Connect. It's got a nice foam case. Uh, here's the other uh, transceiver. It comes with a whole bunch of different wires. Uh, you can plug it into a professional balanced audio input with an XLR jack like that. You can plug it into your camera with this plug. Uh, it comes with some updating uh, things like little adapters so you can update and change and update firmware. Um, I don't know what that does. There's another, this is an yeah, other one of these. The microphones comes with that. So it's really well laid out and it's a really, really, really nice product. It was a little bit expensive for microphones in general. Uh, I think I paid about 670 or 680 uh, 675 somewhere in that for the Deity Connect. Definitely worth it. However, I'm gonna give you an alternative. I haven't used it myself, but I've heard good things. Uh, Rode, R-O-D-E, makes a microphone called the Rode Wireless Go. I think they were about $100 or $150. Uh, you get one and one, so you get one transceiver and one receiver. The, the receiver has, they both have these little clips uh, you can fit them on your belt pack. The actual clip also fits into that hot shoe or your cold shoe mount. So on your camera, you just slide it right in. They both actually have a microphone built into them, but on the transceiver or the receiver, I believe you can also put a lavalier mic or some other kind of mic. So whatever it is, you can actually put that microphone into that as well and you'll get great sound. But you can literally, I've seen YouTubers do it, they'll just clip it right here, uh, right next to their mouth or below their mouth. You could put it on a hat if you wanted. You could put it wherever you need to, on a jacket, coat, jacket, and they just clip open uh, and shut. Uh, but again, I'll link that down below just for your, uh, just for convenience. I haven't used it. Again, it only does one person, whereas the Deity Connect does two people. So I can have two different people wirelessly mic'd up, uh, control all of it through that box again, and without having to go near myself or them. So uh, really excited about that. But anyway, try that, look that one up as well. The Rode Wireless Go.
I've heard great things about it from some of these same audio folks. So anyway, we're going to keep going on. I've got lots more stuff to talk about. Okay, so moving on from audio, we're going to talk about lighting now. So obviously, when you shoot fireworks, when you when you try to capture fireworks, the firework is the light. However, when I'm recording an intro or a demo or something like this, you obviously want good light. So what I used to use, you can see it when uh, in some of my previous videos, I'll link them right here, the uh, New Year's Eve and even the uh, 4th of July or 5th of July, whatever it was, I had a light in my hand. It was this light right here. This is the Loom Cube. It's uh, this is an older generation. I think it's the Loom Cube One. They make a new generation called the Loom Cube 2.0. It's lighter. It's better. It's less expensive. It comes with a lot of these options. But so the Loom Cube looks like this. Square. These are actually it's really cool. They are waterproof, so you could take them scuba diving or snorkeling up to whatever it is, 10 meters or 30 feet, whatever it is. Um, there's like 10 different levels of brightness. Uh, I don't know if I can show you, but there's two There's two different buttons on top. Uh, one, turns, one turns it off, one turns it on and steps it up. So I don't know what brightness this is, but as you can see, it gets really, really bright. Um, I've had this problem in the past where there you go. So I've had this problem in the past where I made it too bright in the dark setting, the camera that I was using, uh, just it couldn't handle that much light. So I looked all washed out, but still a good product. If you got it, it, it whoops, if you, if you did it, if you set it up properly, it is a good product. Uh, I would recommend getting a diffuser, it's just kind of a friction diffuser. So it, it's a friction mount and then you still have that light, but now it's much softer. So if I didn't have these lights up here, I have this much, much softer light. Still, depending on where you are, if you need to make it brighter, turn it off. So that's the, that's off. And then here you go. So anyway, but that, that's again, that's the Loom Cube. Um, the 2.0 is really cool. I think it's about 80 or 90 bucks. I would recommend if you're gonna do it though, uh, this is a new one. It came out a little while ago, maybe last year. This is the Loom Cube uh, light panel, LED light panel. It's called LC Panel 1. Uh, okay, so, but it comes with this mount. You can mount it right onto the top of your camera. And again, you'll get some great, great, great light. Um, it's dimmable, it's bi-color, which means you can actually, it's actually, I think, bi-color, but you can set it with, uh, when I turn it on, and again, I don't know how, how bright this is right now. So this is at 10% brightness, and this is not daylight. Daylight is 5,600 Kelvin. This is at 32, so it's got that much uh, warmer tone to it, 3,200 Kelvin, as you can see. Maybe you can see. So that's 10% brightness. Uh, you press it, and you can. there's three buttons, super simple to use. You can change uh, the color just by going, so I'm going up in 100, um, 100 degree Kelvin each time. So as you can see, it's gonna get a little cooler now. It's not as uh, warm. It's not that orange, yellow tone. So now that's the tone. This is actually daylight color. So, uh, but, and that's again, only 10% brightness. You can go all the way up to 100%. Um, it tells you how long the battery is that you actually charge this. It's got an internal battery. Uh, if you had to, you could actually charge your phone with this as well as like a battery bank. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because then you wouldn't have light, but uh, at 10%, you can use this for, at a hun at, I think I'm at 100%, six and a half hours or six hours. So really, really cool product. Again, I'll link that down below as well. But again, Loom Cube, they make this one and they make this one definitely recommended. Um, I'm not even going to go up to 100% because it's incredibly bright. So anyway, that's the Loom Cube panel. The Loom Cubes, I think, again, are 90 bucks. The 2.0 comes with a whole bunch of different diffusers and color things and all sorts of different stuff. Uh, this one, I think it is, 
maybe 130 bucks, 140 bucks. Um, I'll leave that in the comments down below as well. Um, now, <clears throat> the other type of lighting that I have is I bought not too long ago. I needed, I figured, you know, I need some more soft light. So I actually have two lights. It came in a kit. It's called Newer. It's a two pack. The really cool thing is they come with both light stands and batteries. So it's, I think it's the Sony battery format. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the Sony battery format. I can actually take these out into the field. Uh, I did buy the soft boxes as an accessory, but basically what happens is um, I just put them up. Right now they're plugged in, so I can plug them in, or I can put up to two batteries on each one. Uh, they are rechargeable batteries. If you had more, you could actually just swap one out, put one in whatever, uh, but really cool, nice soft light, not expensive. These were uh, like $200 total for the two pack, uh, plus another 40 or 50 bucks for the, the bigger soft boxes. They do come with barn doors, which means you can actually shape the light to, you know, go one way or another. But um, I actually rather prefer the super soft soft boxes. So that's why I took the barn do doors off. They come with travel packs. Uh, so anyway, that is the Neewer bicolor dimmable rechargeable lights. So, uh, and again, it was like $200 for those. Uh, but next up, we're gonna move on. I can't actually show you the next two products I'm gonna talk about, but the first is the Manfrotto tripod. I'm actually using it to shoot this video again, so I can't really show you the tripod. But this, the again, I'll link it down below. Uh, maybe I'll put what it looks like here, but I'm using the Manfrotto 055 three section aluminum tripod. Uh, it's more expensive now than when I bought it. I think it's about $200 or $210 or $20. I bought it for like $180. Uh, it's just the tripod. It's super, super flexible. It's a great tripod, not flexible like bendy, but you can do a lot of things with it. It's easy to use. It's easy to, to change each leg. You can have them independently. Um, it actually has a column in the middle. You can hang your camera upside down. You can put the it so it's like an arm. Uh, really super cool. I haven't used a whole bunch of the features that come with it that you can do with it, but it is a cool tripod. Again, it was the zero, the Manfrotto 055 three section uh, aluminum tripod. They do make one in carbon fiber, which is significantly lighter and easier to use. It's also significantly more expensive. So uh, I would definitely recommend this one. Uh, and then on top of that, I put a video head. It comes with just a threaded thing that you, you can, you could, you could actually put a camera on, but I wanted the video head. So the video head is the thing that actually makes it so you can turn and pan and tilt it. There's all sorts of different type of uh, interfaces between the camera. Some of them are used for photography and you're taking a picture. You only need it to actually uh, take that picture, lock it in and don't move it. Video heads, you're actually allowed, you're able to pan and tilt, uh, move them around. They can go each way and then you want them to be able to lock in place and stay. So uh, with the Manfrotto 055, I'm using the Manfrotto 502 video head. It's great. I love it wouldn't trade it. It is heavy. I actually took it to Pahrump, uh, to in, when I was interviewing Doug, uh, at Red Apple Fireworks and it is a beast between both of them. They barely fit my suitcase. I had to take the, the head off, uh, to get it to fit, but I would do it again. It is a great video head. So anyway, that's the video head and the tripod. I do also have one other tripod. It's the Amazon Basics tripod. I needed a second tripod for uh, other cheaper, lighter weight cameras. It's just, again, it's an Amazon Basics. I think it was about 30 bucks. Uh, I bought two of them, one already broke. Uh, I'd still buy it again uh, because they're only 30 bucks. Uh, I think I banged it in by accident and the first one broke, but it does have a removable plate. You can actually put that, whatever it is on it, onto it. If you had a smaller, mirrorless camera or uh, just a point and shoot camera, it would be perfect for that. So 
Uh, I'm not gonna put this camera on or that camera on, but I'll definitely put something smaller on and would highly recommend it. Okay, the next thing and the last thing that we'll talk about for this camera setup is the bag. So I have all this gear, I need to take it with me. I need to take it to a field, set it up easily, transport it, put it back in a bag. Uh, and when I'm carrying all this stuff, it gets really, really heavy. So I wanted to make sure that I have a bag that sits on my shoulders and distributes the weight between my shoulders and with a chest harness and a waist harness. Uh, so I have the Low Pro Pro Runner 450 AW2. I don't know what all that stuff means. The, it's just a model number, but it's a fairly big bag. It's this big, it's sitting over there actually, uh, but it holds the stuff. I've, I've kept upgrading bags over and over and over again to the point where I just got tired and I said, I want a big bag that's comfortable. It's got a lot of padding on the shoulders, on the back. Um, and it does again allow you to strap it to yourself easily. Uh, I can put the tripod on the back of it. Uh, it's got a rain cover built into it, so you just pull out the rain cover. Uh, so that's great as well. Anyway, but that's that bag. It wasn't cheap again. Bags for some reason are not. They usually run somewhere between a good bag will cost you about $150 to $200. This one was right in the middle there. I think it's about $180 when I bought it. I don't know what it is now. Again, I'll link that down below as well. Okay, so if you've watched my video from the 4th of July or from New Year's, you notice that I had two cameras. One is that camera, the Canon 6D Mark II, um, pointed up at the sky, uh, capturing the actual explosion. The other one, uh, I have a, a smaller camera sitting, depending on which show, and I'll link one of them above here, uh, I had a GoPro. So for the 4th of July, I think I was using a GoPro Hero 5. I've since upgraded to a GoPro Hero 8 Black. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome action camera. Uh, the amount of, of uh, stabilization you get, you can walk around and it really, really stays stable. It's really cool, uh, but here it is. Uh, this one came with a, and they, there's all sorts of different configurations when you buy it. Uh, this one actually came with the camera with two batteries, I think, with uh, one or two micro SD cards. It has like a head strap and a chest strap, uh, but, and then it has this, it's called a shorty. So it's actually a little mini extendable uh, hand grip. It also has a tripod, so you can set it down on the table. I could set it down and uh, record myself looking at this camera, um, but instead I'm gonna look at this camera right now. But I think that's a shorty, um, does clip on. You can change the angle. So if you wanna hold it this way, um, I did put this other little device on it. Um, what I do with that is I actually put, there's a tripod mount here. I do put the, um, the Movo microphone. Um, I'll hold it like this again and I'll put the Movo microphone on as well, and then I can talk. Um, I did that because if this furry thing, the dead cat will get actually in the shot uh, if I don't. So one thing that GoPro did when they launched this is they pretty much completely changed the configuration of the GoPro. So the buttons are on a different side, the charging port's on a different side. Uh, they also came out with something called the media mod, which I have on here as well. Uh, you don't actually need a microphone to go if you use the media mod. Uh, it has a microphone built into it, and I believe there's another microphone on the back. So again, if I'm talking to it or pointing it, uh, it will still hear me here and hear me hear whatever you're saying. Um, but that's the GoPro media mod. It comes with these two, uh, or it allows for, I should say, if I can do it pretty tight there we go so it has two cold shoes one on the top and one on the side um, when they launched this they came out with a little monitor that faces you so you could actually point it at you I don't have it um, and then the second one um, they launched a little light uh, I have it somewhere um, I personally think that uh, one of these loom cube or loom cube panel is better, but if you didn't need the monitor, I could do this for certain. And then I could also plug in the microphone on the side, like so. Gotta 
screw it the right way. So if this was my setup, that's a pretty great setup. You got some nice light and you got uh, some nice audio. There's actually the really cool thing that they did with this media mod is they put the, uh, the audio interface. There's actually a plug. Uh, where'd my plug go? I don't know where the cable went. Oh, there it is. So the really cool thing is you can now plug in the microphone, click, and now there's on the back of the media mod, there's a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, for the, I think, doesn't want to go in. Maybe it's a different, could be a different cable. Yep, there we go. So anyway, you put that into the three and a half millimeter jack. Uh, in the past, when I had the GoPro Hero 5, you need this other dongle thing that's, it converts USB-C to three and a half millimeter, uh, uh, three and a half millimeter jack for one of these microphones. There was no way around it. It's the only thing that worked. Um, it was awkward and clumsy. Uh, I actually bought a case to hold it into one place, but now you have the media mod and that would be all you need. Now I would have lighting and I would have, um, uh, a microphone. So, uh, and you can also charge it while it's in the, in this case, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I could literally hold that, walk around, turn it around, turn it around again. I could mount the microphone backwards so that it was facing me like so, so that while I'm talking to, while I'm showing something on camera, like a store tour, um, this is what I could use. However, I could also plug in, because I have it, I could plug in the Deity Connect, wearing the transceiver, and now I have wireless audio that it doesn't matter where I look. But anyway, so this is my second camera. Um, I'm actually gonna try to start using the bigger camera as well as a second or third camera um, in the future. I have some plans, I wanna do some stuff. Uh, this whole virus thing has really screwed stuff up. Um, I was hoping to go out to a couple of the demos, um, <clears throat> including Red Apple, maybe Spirit of 76, or one of those other ones, uh, and shoot some video of all of the demos that are going on. So, uh, but again, fortunately got that whole plan got screwed up. So that didn't happen. Hopefully I'll be able to get to some of those places again in the somewhat near future. I've got a lot of stuff I want to shoot. I know that there's a whole bunch of store tours I want to do, uh, which are in driving distance. So a couple things that I definitely keep in my bag is a power bank. This is the Anchor Power Core Plus. It is a giant power bank. It's not, it's not light, uh, but it is the Anchor Power Core Plus. 26,800 milliamp hours, PD 45 watts. You could actually power a laptop with PD, so PD is power delivery. Um, it comes with a plug and a cable, so it comes with a wall charger that you can actually power it really quickly. Um, but, you know, for example, the, the lavalier microphones, both the transceiver and the receiver, use um, USB C. The, the, the Deity microphone uses USB-C to charge it. So I could literally just take this, oops, where'd it go? I could take this cable, this plug, plug it into one of the two USB-A to a USB-C, plug that in, and now you've got power on the go. It's got a, a, a display here with how much power is left. Uh, definitely recommend this brand, definitely recommend this product. So. Um, anyway, so that's my power bank. Um, I have a couple other ones. I think I have one that's smaller. It's a 10,000 milliamp. I have a 20,000. Um, so anyway, that's, but definitely recommend you keep one of those in your camera bag, your video bag, if you can charge things. At the very least, you can always recharge your cell phone if you're trying to shoot. Um, I actually carry an extra one and I put it to, into the GoPro when I, when I shoot so that the GoPro never runs out of power. Uh, it usually runs out of uh, storage space on the GoPro before it runs out of power. So, but anyway, that is it, guys. I, 
I probably have some other video gear. I, actually, I know I have some video gear, uh, but I'm gonna leave that for a different time. Thanks again for coming to the channel. Thanks again for coming to Boom in the Sky. If you like this video, definitely smash that like button. If you don't like this video, smash that like button twice just to make sure it registered. So uh, also definitely drop us a comment down below. What kind of video gear do you use? What kind of video gear would you want to upgrade if you could upgrade? So are you looking into a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, a video camera, a camcorder, whatever? What would you upgrade to? And of course, subscribe. We've got more stuff coming up, guys. We've got a lot more stuff coming up. I'm trying to get back into recording on a regular basis. I've got some product demos. I've got some firework demos. I've got uh, setup videos coming. I can already plan it. I have stash videos. I've been ordering fireworks. I've got pallets of fireworks uh, in storage. They're kind of stuck in storage, so I can't even get to them right now, but I'm going to do some stash video walkthroughs. Uh, hopefully I'll only do two or three, but again, thanks guys for coming. I hope you enjoy this. I know this is a long, long, long video. I hope it wasn't too long and you're still with me. Um, again, I'll leave all of the descriptions below. Uh, if you have any questions, drop me a comment, ask me about my camera gear, about other stuff. Uh, I'm probably going to do another video about techniques for recording fireworks. So uh, stay tuned for that as well and definitely subscribe. I did just hit 250 subscribers. I guess we're gonna have to do another video shoot soon. So anyway, thanks guys for coming to Boom in the Sky. I hope you enjoy this. Like I always say, make it beautiful and make it loud. Thanks guys, see you soon.